Good morning. I'm going to welcome everybody this morning as we come to worship God. I want to welcome everyone who's joining us online for the same thing. We're, we're so happy you could join us and, and participate in worship with us this morning uh, and come into God's presence together. In Psalm 46.10, many of you have heard this voice, uh, this voice, you've heard this voice because, you, you know, every, we, we've heard this verse. Be still and know that I am God. And I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. Can we just be still for a moment? It's very hard to be still, isn't it? Especially when there's a whole other, all these other people still talking and coming in, right? It's, Lord, we come before you in a, in truth, well, I'll just speak for myself, God, it is very hard to be still at times. So Lord, help us to, in some fashion today, in worship, still the thoughts, Lord, that would distract us, the ones in our heads that are still trying to figure out where we're going for lunch after the service and all of that other stuff. Help us to be still, simply to be still. Not that we don't worship actively, but to still our minds, to still our hearts for a moment and just simply know you are God and we will exalt you today among the nations and among the earth. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everybody. Good to see all these smiling faces here today. And as always, good morning to everybody in the camera over there that's online. Hope you're having a good day today, too. So, no more talking. Without further ado, let's open the service with a song. So please stand.
prayerful song, isn't that? It's beautiful. Please be seated. Can I have our children that are too old for child care? Come on up. Hey. How you doing? Don't look up there. Your eyes are right here. You see it? Right here. I can see you. Don't, don't even look up. I have to turn and face you this way. Right? Um, look at that. Do you know what a law is? Can you name a law? Like in our, do you have laws? Like what, what's, what's a good law in our society? Don't, don't huh? Don't Buckle up. All right. Put your seatbelts on. What did you say? Uh, don't, drunk drive. don't drink and drive. This is all driving laws, right? But you can go and drive as fast as you want, right? No. Oh, there's a. Don't steal. Don't steal. You get in trouble for stealing, right? I just want to share with you something, because there are some laws in some states that are what we call on the books, maybe from a long time ago, that they never took off. So these are some actual laws that still exist. I like this one. This is in Salem, West Virginia. It is against the law to eat candy less than an hour and a half before church service. I like that law. No, it's not a, is that a law here? No, <laughs> unfortunately not. Uh, now, a lot of these laws, I, they don't actually, I think, enforce, but they're still on the books, right? There's a city in Arizona where it's illegal to drive a car in reverse. So I don't know how you're supposed to get out of a parking space at the mall, but that some reason or other, that was on it. There's a town in Minnesota where a woman can be arrested for impersonating Santa Claus. Not a guy, apparently. I could, I could be Santa Claus, but you can't. You know, it's like, <laughs> isn't that crazy? Uh, oh, in Oklahoma, people who make ugly faces at dogs can be arrested and put in jail or fined. I wonder if a bulldog can be put in jail for making an ugly face. Oh, I'm sorry if you like bulldogs. I'm just <laughs> <clears throat> I am glad this one does not apply here. But in Nicholas County, West Virginia, a preacher is not allowed to tell jokes from the pulpit. Now, I don't know what that means if someone thinks the sermon is a joke, but that's, you know. And it's illegal to honk your horn after 9 p.m. at any place where sandwiches or cold drinks are served. I don't know. These, these, those are pretty silly, aren't they? And yet, I don't know, there's got to be a reason why they came up with these to begin with, but I, I don't know what they are, right? In Jesus' day, however, he got in trouble because there were people, a group of people called the Pharisees. They were the ones that talked about the laws of God. And he got in trouble for breaking the law. And some of them were pretty silly. And, and, and it's not that God's law was silly. It's sometimes they kind of added to it and made up their own laws, and then they pretty soon thought that was God's law too, and they weren't, because Jesus would never break God's laws. But he had no problem breaking the Pharisees' laws. So there's this story where um, Jesus went into a synagogue, and it's the Sabbath. The Sabbath is... The day of rest. You're not supposed to do any work on the Sabbath, right? That's that. And there was a man there whose hand was all crippled. And Jesus healed his hand. Wouldn't that be great? And the Pharisees got mad because he healed the man on God's day, the Sabbath. And Jesus asked a good question. The Sabbath mean we can't do good on the Sabbath? That's ridiculous, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't you think that the best day maybe to do good, or any day, but especially on the Sabbath, God would want us to help somebody? And, and, but they had their laws. They were so you know, caught up in the law that they stopped caring about people. And that's not good, is it? So we're going to be talking a bit about the Sabbath today, but I just want us to understand that sometimes, just remember, we, it's always, in God's eyes, good to do good. 
it's always good in God's eyes to help somebody when they have a need, right? We were just talking about that with the food that we're doing. And, and there's never ever a law to not be kind to somebody in God's, in God's law, right? So God, thank you for Jesus' example and that we know it's always good to do good. And so Lord, when we see a need around us, if we can help, you know what, Lord? We want to help. So thank you for those opportunities and thank you for the law that says that you love us in the law of the heart. Amen. Amen. Thanks. So this, uh, a few weeks back, I was did a message on mental health, got incredible response. I, I appreciate that, not just uh, from church here, but as we were putting those things online, uh, a lot of response to that. And there was another aspect of that that I, I want to f- kind of just include today. And, and it has to do with the Sabbath. So I'm calling this message, Give It a Rest. Do you get that title, by the way? It's a musical rest, if you don't know. <laughs> and uh, so do you know that in our time, the way that we calculate time, most of the times that we talk about have to do with astronomy. For instance, one day equals one rotation of the Earth. Full rotation of the Earth equals a day. That's where we get our concept of a day. Um, A month, although it's changed a little over time for calendar's sake, but a month has to do with all the phases of the moon in one month. And a year is how long it takes the Earth to revolve one once completely around the sun. That's a year. Day, month, year. Do you know where we get the week from? That's not an uh, astrological. astronomical event. I was going to say astrological. It's not an astronomical event. The day, the week, seven days for a week is is purely 100% from Scripture. Right from Genesis of God's creation. And from the beginning of time, God has modeled a day of rest in that seven-day week. It's a quote from Peter uh, Scazzaro, sums up the purpose of rest so well. The Sabbath is not about resting from our work, but learning from our rest. It's a different way to look. I want us to look at it a little bit differently this morning. Because you know what? God, the creator of the world, creator of the universe, do you know what? He could have created the world in six days, and that's it. He added the seventh. He didn't have to. It's not like God needs rest, right? It says that in the terms, but he he does that because he knows you and I so well, because after all, he is uh, the one who created us. He knows what our needs are, right? He could have created the universe in six days and be done with it, but in his perfect creation. You know what? He adds the seventh day. Let's look at that passage. It's from Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. And by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And he stopped and took that seventh day. And then God blessed the seventh day, and made it holy. Because on it, he rested from the work of creating that he had done. So it doesn't say he was exhausted. It just basically, he stopped the creation of what he had done and then added this day and blessed it and made it holy. So I I, I know I said, like it was a few months ago, that in truth, we have nine commandments, the big, the big nine, and I know everybody's going, wait a minute, there are ten. Yeah, but we've kind of removed this one in, in, our practic, in, practical, in practical terms of our living out our lives. 
keeping the Sabbath holy in terms of what God looked at all of that, we sort of ignore that a lot now, right? God, who is perfect, chose to rest, and rest is a part of our work, not a result of being lazy or being physically tired, just about that. It's actually a part of our work. When we don't include rest in our work and in our ministry and in our schedule, we're actually not fulfilling everything that God expects of us. Now, I don't know about you, but I know what happens when I'm tired and worn out, and all you have to do is ask my wife, okay? Because uh, I know if I'm tired, I get cranky, impatient. If I'm exhausted or tired, I, I can begin to make poor decisions, right? Can I be honest? When I am tired and exhausted, I am less like Jesus. Not that he didn't get tired, I'm saying, but in my character when I'm tired, I'm less like the character of Jesus. There's my confession. And I know that doesn't happen to any of you, right? Yeah, right? And even Jesus... In, he recognized, right, the importance of rest. When We see that at different times throughout the Gospels. In Mark 6, 31, Jesus tells the disciples, go find a quiet place to rest. In Luke 5, 16, Jesus, it says, often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer and to get away, to go by himself. We don't need rest because we're weak. Sometimes we get this really messed up concept, you know, that, you know, I, I, I knew, a, knew a guy from my last church who, man, he, he workaholic was definitely his, his pictures right there, you know, and I remember that his uh, son-in-law to be was switching jobs, and he had like a week between jobs, and he wanted to know, well, why don't you get something you could work at for that week? You know, that, that was his whole thing. Like somehow, if you're not working, something's wrong. You know, no, something's wrong if you're not taking a break, actually, at times. Right? It, it doesn't have to be like that crazy. We don't need rest because we're weak. We need rest because that is God's perfect model for our lives. It provides us protection. He knows that we need a rest. And so he builds this into his commands for us. You know, you look at the Ten, the ten Commandments, and the first section is really about our relationship with, between us and God. The last section is all about our relationships with one another, including our parents. And then there's this one that's kind of, it's not exactly in the middle, but in the transition between our relationship from God and, and that, it is about God a little bit, and it's also about, this is for you. This is my, this is for, this is, this is my gift for you. And, and so when we were talking about mental health and, and other things, there's a word that comes uh, to mind about our lives, and that is having resilience in life. That, that's a good thing, right? Uh, he builds this command for us so that it builds resilience in our life, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. You ever feel like you could, maybe you could use a little bit of resilience in life right now, right? A lot of people. Resilience is about being able to bounce back when you face a difficult time. And rest is an important component of being resilient. Having regular rhythms. I think God created rhythms within our life. You know, that uh, in these regular rhythms of rest and understanding our unique uh, signs that tell us that, that we need to rest. And that's a spiritual discipline. And, and that it allows us to avoid getting stuck in the face of adversity. Rest is necessary to have endurance, a clear mind, an emotional capacity to not be overcome by life's challenges. Rest helps us listen and hear God's voice. And so God gives us this gift. It's called a Sabbath day. 
day of rest. So let's look at Exodus chapter 20, where we just, just read the command. It's out of Exodus 20, where the Ten Commandments are listed. Verses 8 through 11 are about the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, or your male or female servant, nor your animals, or any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that's in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So before I continue, just a caveat, because I have been there, and, and in fact, I'm, for me, sometimes Sunday is hard to be a Sabbath, because I am exhausted. You people just exhaust me on a Sunday morning. No, I, I really, you know, I'm exhausted. You know, and, and I know some of you have to work. There are jobs. I, I've said this often before when I was a lifeguard. Guess what? People can drown on a Sunday. Somebody has to, you know, it's, there are jobs that, that are required. And, and so you, all I'm going to say is in the, in the rest of this message, you've got to create a Sabbath for yourself. Okay? All right? But some of us have a hard time stopping and taking a break. So here are some signs. I mentioned some of mine, but here are some signs that you are weary and maybe need some additional rest. You lose interest in the things you're usually passionate about and that bring you joy. Your temper is short and you're easily provoked. You become, you become offended easily or take things personally. You overthink things. You feel exhausted despite the fact that all of that, not getting enough rest, ultimately results in exhaustion where even when you're getting rest now, you still feel exhausted. I don't know what your, you know what it is when you get tired in your life. All I'm saying is that by recognizing those things in your life, um, you, that you will need some extra mental and emotional and physical and relational and spiritual rest in order for you to remain resilient in life. So Jesus mentions this, these things as well. Um, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I know that's none of us, right? right? Oh, of course we are. You know, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. What? I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. It's not just physical. This is a spiritual discipline. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And, and then I read this passage as I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm going, I don't, even, I don't actually remember this passage. I'm sure I've read it, but it never hit me. But from Hebrews, in chapter 4, verses 9 through 11. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. He's comparing us to basically non-believers. But he's actually saying in here to not do this is disobedience. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Right? So, so, so some of us, you know, we're, we are going so hard. We're, we're, we're trying so hard and we're, to pretend that we've got it all together, you know. And we're trying so hard at times to keep up with the Joneses or whoever your neighbors are. And, and we're trying so hard to make sure our kids get every experience so they can have the greatest things in their lives. And we're working and we're going and we're, and, and we're running at 110 miles an hour, but we're living actually in a 40 mile an hour zone. And we need rest. Cardiologists have coined the term hurry sickness. It's not psychologists, cardiologists. It's a continuous struggle and an unrelenting attempt to accomplish and achieve more, participate in more in less time than, we're, than we used to. 
And they say that that leads to more stress on the body and the mind, and that leads to more heart attacks and strokes, and it leads to depression and anxiety. Keeping the Sabbath holy. There's an old Puritan saying, good Sabbaths make good Christians. But in truth, honoring the Sabbath was a lot easier in Puritan New England. Can I just say that? Some of you might remember that. I don't, but it's like, you know, it's because everybody, almost everybody took the Sabbath seriously. You know, shops weren't open on Sundays. Businesses closed their doors. Everyone headed to church. Sabbaths are so much harder today in our contemporary America. In fact, our society values busyness and productivity. Observing the Sabbath, I gotta tell you, is out and out countercultural for us. But then again, a whole lot of what God calls us to is countercultural today, isn't it? If you don't believe, you know, so in order to honor that, what I would like to do is, is just invite everyone. The bill is on me. Anybody who wants to come, we're going to go to Chick fil A this afternoon. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry. Then I guess I can't fulfill that. They're closed today. Sorry. Listen to the mission statement of Chick fil A. This is Chick-fil-A's mission statement, to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that is entrusted to us, to have a positive influence on all who come in contact with Chick-fil-A. The owner, the founder of Chick-fil-A, it's like the devout Christian. No, we're going to, we're going to honor the Sabbath, and we're going to make sure all of our employees have the opportunity to honor the Sabbath. It's so one, one article I was reading about Chick-fil-A says, while the decision to close on Sunday is driven by religious values, analysts say it is a brilliant business decision. They can't help themselves. It's just, it, it was all about honoring God, you know. It, it, but it said closing on Sundays gives employees a chance to recharge. And it creates a sense of community. Yeah, sounds like a Sabbath to me. And then it says, and it's scarcity among customers. <laughs> what that simply means is, if you're really craving Chick-fil-A and you know it's going to be closed on Sunday, there's a whole lot of people there on Monday and Saturday. And it's a good business. <laughs> but reporters and businesses, they don't really get this stuff. So they always have to ask the question, how much money do you think you lose a year because you're closed on Sundays? And the owner, who since passed away, but his, his kids actually signed a covenant with him saying we will not open on Sundays, okay? He, he asked the question, I don't know how much money we lose. How much money do you think we save by, uh, that we gain by being closed on Sundays? But the analysts can't help themselves. They're... They're saying that by being closed on Sundays in any given year, they are losing millions, if not a billion dollars a year. He doesn't care. Of course, he's making so much money. Maybe he doesn't have to care, but it's like, but that had nothing to do with it. It's not about economics, right? It's about keeping the Sabbath holy, holy. It's, it, it's, it, it says, keep it to the Lord, a for the Lord. Keep it, it holy, a God-centered rest. So first things first, taking time out to worship God together is essential, I think, in keeping God's command, or at least spending time with God on whatever day of rest you need to have. Keeping it holy, taking time to remember God's rightful place in your life, keeping it holy, spending time in prayer, spending time in worship. Right? we got to keep it holy. But now I want to also give you some real practical suggestions on having a day of rest. It doesn't mean a day of doing nothing, but it's a day of rest. 
There's a thing actually called the, the Sabbath Manifesto. Okay? It was written by an organization called Reboot. <clears throat> you know, it's amazing how people discover God's truth even when they don't believe in God. So this is a secular organization, but God's truth is always God's truth, whether you understand where it came from or not, right? And they put out these 10 things. I'm not talking about all 10. But then I began to read some Jewish organizations, because this is Ten Commandments, Old Testament, and they took those and they're applying it to their faith. And I think we can do the same in some of these. So, uh, but here are some real practical suggestions. And the first one, oof, get ready. Maybe on the Sabbath, it's a good day to avoid technology. All right, I know, somebody's having a panic attack right now, I, I can tell, right? I can't, you know, you, you, your heart's just like Mr. Beat here. I, I can't survive without going on Instagram on, a, on a, any given moment instead of a day, you know? Um, if, what, if I didn't like a post, what would I do, you know? Will, will, will people know that I'm still alive? Yeah, you, you know, avoid technology. On the seventh day of creation, according to the Bible, God rested. Now, and that means this. Instead of making more and more stuff on the seventh day, he stopped. And actually, if you read about it, God looked at this and he said it was very good. Okay? He stopped... And one of the things is to appreciate what we already have. Right? That, because creating things is easier than ever thanks to some amazing technologies we have at our fingertips. Right? Some of you mentioned, you know, I can't see the kids at children's time. Well, we had to figure out a way we could put that up on the screen because we have different technology than we used to. But it worked. We figured it out. We, you know, and we have this all at our fingertips, and from playlists to videos to just word documents and computers and tablets and cell phones and iPhones and music players and, and hundreds of things a day we can create. But like God, it's a good idea maybe to appreciate and take some time just what we already have. I don't need a new playlist today. You know, um, I, I, I just want to appreciate. So in Isaiah 58, 13, it says, it actually says you should honor the Sabbath by not doing your usual things. Right? Let me read the passage for you. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words. Do you see how the, the context is going there? And what's more usual than for us to be checking our emails, scrolling through our music collections, and texting the night away? Modern technologies are pretty miraculous. And you can, I mean, I'm so, I can chat with my family in Missouri. With Daniel and Vicky, we just did a FaceTime call, and you know, it's amazing to be able to do that. You can talk to somebody halfway across the world, right? It's wonderful. I can instantly download any song I want. I don't have to go to the music store and buy an album or an 8-track. I never had an 8-track player. Uh, you, you, can, you, you know what, you can tell the universe what you think about the latest Jurassic Park movie that came out this weekend. But having them on 24-7 means you may not appreciate and take the time to just see how, much, um, how amazing they really are. So in Bible times, most of the weeks were filled with physical labor. Today, our days are crammed with technology, aren't they? And though it may not always seem like an unending toil, using technology can be really draining. 
it's, it's our minds, not necessarily our bodies, that need to be renewed. So taking a Sabbath rest from technology is a great way to reconnect to God, to reconnect with yourself, and to connect with the world around you. There's no app for that. Don't show me one you think that is. <laughs> I'm going to really challenge you to try this one, at least because this is the thing. You may find out how really addicted you are to this by stopping it. And then you've got a different question to answer. <laughs> right? So give that one a shot, right? Here's another one. This one may not be as hard, although for some it, it may be. The Sabbath is a day of rest, which actually lends itself to spending quality time with those that we're close to. So connect with loved ones. Whether it's family, that may not, that may not be it. But with those that you're close to, close friends, maybe your spouse, spending an hour with two or someone you love it actually can be a way to relax. Because you know what? Throughout Jewish history, the Sabbath meal was always a time when families and loved ones would come together and spend some quality time together. So growing up, I got my father-in-law here today. For, it was good. Growing up, Sunday afternoon, you know where I always had lunch? Around their dining table, right? And it was all, that was the tradition. Do we do that anymore? You know? I know some, uh, we, we talked about COVID and some families actually started eating together again as opposed to grabbing a meal and just spreading out through the house and just have your meal and having meals together. The Sabbath is a great way to, to be reminded of that and, and come together for some just to be together. A commentary on the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible, which is where we find the Ten Commandments, suggests that Abraham and Sarah, the first Jews, welcome guests into their tent every Sabbath, demonstrating the loving kindness that they became known for. Since those very first Jews, right, it's been customary to gather together with close friends and family on the Sabbath. Some of you, you go out for lunch every Sunday after worship, and you invite new people to join you. Amen. Right? Thank you for doing that. Sharing a meal and fellowship with others is good Sabbath practice. Friendships can be strengthened by Sabbath connections. Gather your friends, relaxing, unplugged type of meal, and you'll be amazed at maybe the conversation that will flow and as you appreciate each other's company. All right? Another one that's on there, it says, you know, isn't it? Nice day today, right? Get outside. You might know, growing up, you know, I'd be watching TV. My mother's always what? Go play outside. There was always something good about going outside, right? And I didn't have to be home until the streetlights came on. I'm in one of those, I'm in that generation, you know? I don't know where you are. We don't care. Just come back when the, just come back when the streetlights come on, you know? And, and, and uh, go play outside. And, and we did, right? It's like Getting away from the world around us is actually an important part of celebrating the Sabbath. When, when we're surrounded by piles of paperwork, it's hard not to think about our jobs or our taxes or chores or whatever it is. Similarly, when you're sitting at home, that same place that houses your dusty mantle or the stack of bills, it can be hard to truly embrace a day of rest. Sometimes you've got to get away from the house in order to relax, right? The first two instances that, of, that prayer is mentioned in the Bible are both times somebody is leaving their surroundings to go outside. When Abraham rises early in the morning before anyone else is up, I don't know what that's like, but when everyone else is up, you talk to God and then there's a time when his son Isaac is first approached by his future wife, Rebecca, and he's out in the field, kind of, it says, speaking softly to himself. At the heart of getting outside is, isn't, is actually just stepping outside of your world, outside of your familiar, the mundane, 
the work that surrounds you six days of the week and entering into a different realm. So it's not just go outside. You know, well, I'll, go, I'll go do work outside in, in my yard. That, that's not what I'm... It's about getting outside of your own world as well, both mentally and physically. It might be restful, like taking a walk. It might be restful just to get out and go play around a golf. I don't know, but it might even be spiritual where I'm just going to go and walk and spend time. Like sometimes for me, because I grew up by the ocean, that's my, that's my place, you know, and moments of just sitting there and just thinking about God's creation, you know. The only thing that getting outside shouldn't be is ordinary, okay? (coughs) Another one, and it's how we started the service, find silence. Silence is its own form of rest. And that's a hard one for me, I gotta be honest. I'm the one that's, I'm home for two minutes, I gotta turn on something to have noise, you you know? But when you take a break from talking, you actually take a break from the most creative forms of human activity. Think about the creation story again. God literally speaks the world into existence. On the first day, God said, let there be light, and there was light. On the second day, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. On the third day, let the waters under the heaven be gathered around to one place. Let the dry land appear. And God does not stop talking until the seventh day rolls around. God stops both speaking and creating. So finding moments of of silence is the ultimate way to evoke the spirit of this Divine Sabbath rest. Listen again to the call to worship. Be still. and Just know that I am God. One last one. I'm just going to, I'm going to end with this one. Then we'll move into our time of communion. Because in theory, the day of rest sounds, well, kind of selfish, right? It's all about me doing something or not doing something. I, um, and, and after all, that's, that's the underlying assumption that, that you know, I, I deserve a day of rest or I need a day of rest. But in, in truth, the Sabbath is also a day for us to, um, to, to, you know, kick up our feet and chill. But one of the best ways maybe to celebrate the Sabbath is to actually give back and help somebody else. The story I was telling the, the kids today was also the story that we watched on The Chosen this past week. And it just was so blatantly clear as Jesus heals a guy who was so grateful and the Pharisees are going, you, you know, you, you, you can't do that. His life's not in danger. It could have waited. You know, it's not even affecting his life. Really nice to say when you don't have a crippled hand, you know. And the obvious answer is that lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Well, of course it is. Right? Do something totally selfless. Take somebody out from lunch. Do you know in Genesis 18, Abraham invites some strangers in for a bite, and they ended up being angels on a mission from God. You know? Some of you yesterday, you went out and you helped feed people who are hungry, you know? Don't you dare ever do that on a Sunday. That's unlawful. Isn't that ridiculous? Visit a shut-in. Think about something you can do for someone else in your life and do it. Because Sabbath, you know, it's, it's an equalizing experience. The day of rest is for everybody. It, it doesn't matter, you know, what social class, old, young, rich, poor. Sabbath kind of puts us all on the same level. And giving back is the way to make that happen. We cannot keep going the way we are in society. Go, go, go. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Drive, drive. Make it happen. Make it happen. Do more. And God says, stop. Just stop for a moment. Take a breath. Maybe a divine breath. 
Could you just stop for like 24 hours and just slow down your life and rest and remember the Sabbath? Keep it holy. Lord, thank you for a gift. That I, I, I got to be honest, Lord, I, I think maybe we don't really understand how much of a gift it is at times. But you know us so well that that Sabbath rest applied to a lot of other things. Crops and fields and, 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 and all of these things. It's just to take a break. God, help us to honor you by helping us take a break, a day of rest, to worship you. And yeah, Lord, to just come apart so that we don't come apart. To just remember you, to be with friends and family, to just be still and know that you are God. Thank you for this gift in Jesus' name. Amen. Choose the humble and raise them high. You choose the weak and make them strong. You heal our brokenness inside. And give us life. The same love that set the captives free. The same love that opened eyes to see is calling. All by name, you are calling us all by name. The same God that spread the heavens wide, the same God that was crucified is calling us all by name. You are calling us all. captives free same love that opened eyes to see is calling us all by name you are calling us all by name same God that spread the heavens wide same God that was crucified is calling us all by name you are calls us by name. Let's go spread the good news. He calls everyone else too. Amen.